Hey YouTube, Meat Bangit here. Welcome to episode 29 of our Feed the Beast Continuum. Quick tips, tricks, and shit. Um, today I wanted to go over some of the mob spawner aspects. Um, the very beginning, super basic, um, but enough to start generating some ender pearls and stuff like that. So, um, if you've been following along in our uh, better questing here, um, there's a few things we're going to need. Uh, let's see here. If you haven't been generating any plastic, um, get this latex processing unit up because you're going to need it. Um, it might seem like it's unnecessary, but uh, it's you have to have it. Um, there's a couple machines that we're going to need as well. Um, one being this mob crusher. And the other being mob imprisonment tool and mob duplicator. So if you've used uh, some of the other... Uh, mod packs for this stuff um, so this is industrial for going I'm not sure I don't recall what uh, mod pack these were that mob imprisonment tool was called a safari net previously um, so these have changed a little bit as, as mods uh, have changed hands here um, but let's let's kind of take a look at what's gonna cost to make these bad boys um, so the, the biggest thing here is gonna be uh, the machine frames um, so we need a mob duplicator. And let's bring this up. So we've got the duplicator here. Um, you're looking at magma cream, nether wart, a couple emeralds, redstone, and then the machine frame. So you're looking at some plastic here as well. Um, this is the tool that's going to do the, your spawning. So this runs off RF and then it runs off essence. Um, and I'll kind of show you that in just a minute here. We've got the mob crusher. This is a little bit different. Um, these are called a grinder in previous mod packs. Um, not real expensive. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest pain in the asses to get here is um, this imprisonment tool because its main ingredient here is a freaking gas here. Now, in order to get those son of a bitches uh, to not um, kind of hang out over lava. You're going to have to jetpack them, and then it's pretty easy to beat the piss out of them with a sword. Um, usually, you can kind of pick those up before they fall. If you get lucky, you can get them over some netherrack. Um, I know if you're if you're playing and it's a big-ass lake of fire, yeah, it can be kind of a pain in the ass, but don't give up. Um, I did create another tool here, the railgun. Um, it, it works pretty well, especially with the scope on it. Um, probably go over this in another episode but just you know clicking shift you can increase the zoom on here it works half decent um, I think it's it works better if you use anything other than iron rods steel might be a little bit better but we'll go over that in another episode um, just wanted to go over this um, mob grinder shit right now so those are the machines that we're gonna need um, one thing I did want to show here, and we're going to go downstairs and take a look at what we've got going. So it's kind of dirty down here. I really haven't done with uh, much with this part of my base, um, except this. Um, and you're going to see this is kind of a clusterfuck right now. Um, and you might be wondering what in the fuck is going on inside there. Now. If you've been following along with this better questing stuff, you're going to have a, an option here. Um, and you can hear these guys getting their asses kicked inside there. Um, once you go ahead and get this crushed under your feet, you have a choice. Now, the choice I took, this range add-on seems like, yeah, this might be a big deal. It's, I don't know. This is, this is all preference. Now, I went with the drop of evil. Because with the drop of evil, what you do is you put down a whole bunch of dirt like I did inside there. Let's kind of take a look. And then you you right-click all that dirt. Make sure it's all connected. You can see there's one back way in the corner or back against the back wall. Uh, right-click and it'll make all this cursed earth. Now, the reason I did that is because to sustain this, um, you'd have to have this all in darkness. And I think it's it generates relatively slow. But with... Um, with the cursed earth going, I think this it speeds up and it's relatively quick. Um, it might seem like it's a kind of a pain in the ass, and this looks like it's it's kind of a clusterfuck. It, it is. Um, 
this is not the best way to set this up. This is the best way that I've found to set this up for your very first and basic uh, mob spawner. So let's take a look at this. Um, here we've got the mob crusher. This setup is a little bit complicated. Um, you'll see I've got power coming in from upstairs. This goes down. Um, and this is run underneath um, out to the mob spawner, which is inside there. So got a few different things stuck on here. You can see that when a kill is made, it actually is outputting fluid essence. Okay, you can kind of see it happening. And that just comes out. Now, the way I've got this set up right now is power is coming in through the bottom on both machines, and the fluid is going down underneath and onto the very back side. You can, you can see the pipe right there, the back side of the machine. Now, the reason I did that is to make this set up a little bit more compact, and when I'm ready, I can just bolt walls out and the sides out, and then just kind of increase this a little bit. Um, it's easier to have a centralized kind of location for these because you can set these up. Um, you can set multiples up if you have the essence to run them. Um, works pretty well. Now, depending on what is going on down here, you've got some options. Now, I've got this hooked into the rest of my RF network. I don't have to worry about energy or energy items or tanks or output or any of this kind of shit because... Um, you can see the, the item duct here is pumping all my stuff right into this chest. Um, raw chicken, where the hell did that come from? Um, you're going to notice that you're going to end up with some weird shit in here sometimes. Um, it seems like it'll, it'll spawn pretty much anything. You can see blitz here. Anything for the particular dimension this stuff is in, I think that's how this works. Um, I haven't seen any of the really odd stuff like blaze or blizz rods come out of here, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Um, really, right now, I'm worrying about generating gunpowder and ender pearls, um, but that's pretty much how this setup works. Uh, the backside here, this is outputting the essence, which is going back to the mob spawner in there, and then all the items are coming out the side. And you can kind of configure some of that stuff uh, based on the outputs here. If we click on these, um, you can set what is what is doing and what it's not. Um, Let's take a look at the mob spawner itself. We're going to go back to that crusher in just a second. But um, here you can see that we've got a certain amount of essence here. Um, I think it depends on the mob at what this output's at. Um, assuming you can keep this full enough, it'll just keep pumping these bastards out. So right now I've got an Enderman in there. Um, and they just they do their thing. That's just what it is. Um, you can automate this so that if you wanted to set this up um, you can you can actually withdraw from this slot so you put another pipe here and you can pump those um, imprisonment tools out and change them out. You can kind of automate that a little bit. I'm not gonna mess with it right now once this is it, it has to get a little bit bigger I'll do it then but for right now I, I think I'll just I'm not going to worry about it. So, um, But yeah, stored energy here, same kind of outputs. Um, it'll show you work area and always active. Um, we don't really have to worry about the, the work area. It just kind of spawns and does its business. So let's go look at one more thing here. Um, you notice this range add-on? So this is why I said you needed the choice. So let's look at the work area right now. We can toggle that on and off. So this is what is happening. Uh, this is in completely enclosed. So this one um, mob crusher is responsible for all of that area inside there. So it's no problem. Everything is covered as far as I can tell. I went back there and kind of looked. But, um, and the reason that is is because of this range add-on. So without it, it's really only doing the space in front of it. So this is only worthwhile if you're going to put this in here and increase the range on it. And that's kind of how that works. So um, if you're not going to go with uh, the drop of evil here, I don't know. I don't think this is worth it, in my personal opinion. I really don't. Um, I just think that uh, getting this first one going, this drop of evil, um, I think that would be more worthwhile. Um, the reason for that being is drops of evil come from 
wither skeletons, which aren't that difficult um, to get going. Um, you need the mob skulls anyway for wither that you're going to have to eventually put together. Um, but I think this is this is probably the best setup to start with. Um, if somebody else has got any uh, comments on this, you know, definitely post them. But I think this is a good basic setup. I really haven't been running this all that long, and you can see um, for very little effort. Um, Ender pearls and gunpowder looks like it's in half decent shape. So. The one thing I did have to do, if you have a magnum torch up there, in order to get that stuff to start spawning here, um, I had to take mine down. So, one thing to keep in mind, I'm not sure if that if it's 100% the way that's supposed to be. I don't know, I didn't test it. I just wanted to get this set up before I start making a whole bunch of changes again. So, but that is the mob spawner. And then the, the crusher. Um, I did end up making one more machine over here um, since the last episode, which is this these things are stupid expensive um, But this is the implosion compressor um, anything that goes in here you use um, TNT and it will um, Make these things work so um, Keep in mind this is part of the next part of the process. So you will need this machine eventually um, there's a lot of reinforced machine casing here, and you can kind of see, let's go back to Industrial Rebirth, this explosive fun. They do hook you up with 128 TNT to get you started, um, but as far as I've seen for recipes, it looks like about 16 TNT to make that happen. So, going to have to generate some more uh, gunpowder, and it's a good way to do that uh, using creepers. Um, I think uh, if I get a chance here, I'm going to actually see if I can get a, an imprisonment tool and go see if I can get a ghast. See if I can get a few tiers out there. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can still spawn those overworld through um, through a spawner. So, But that's about it for this episode. Um, and I, I think um, there's a few machines in here I'm going to start pushing towards. Not here. And I don't know, because I'm going to end up having to... I'd like to get that jetpack increased up to at least this level. And then there's some of this shit here for some auto-crafting. But what I'm really pushing to get into is this guy. But this digital upgrade, and I think this is where that, that um, implosion machine comes in. And let's, let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, this is this guy... <laughs> Yeah, so this ludicrate, this is a little bit stupid, um, but you can see this kind of shit here is it's a little bit ridiculous. Um, not that this enderium isn't that difficult to make. The plutonium is kind of a pain, um, but this stuff is is a little bit expensive. But this is where this is going to come. This iridium alloy plate, so 16 TNT, and then you're looking at uh, iridium alloy ingots. So, it's going to take a little bit to, to make this happen, but uh, I think once once we get pretty close, it shouldn't be too bad. So, if you haven't been making cryothium, um, there's an easy way to do it. I haven't been able to find blizz worth of shit. Um, so, what you can do is start pumping um, liquid XP, um, which you can see over there. Let's go take a look at this quick. Um... This setup I've been running for a little while. I ended up with about 30 levels, so before I, you know, die, I usually come over here. Um, you can see this XP drain from open blocks will drain out any XP that you have and puts it into this tank. So, um, let's take a look at this. You can make some more angelic cryothium. Real quick, I've got a little bit of time here. Um... The way this works, snowballs in there. Nope. Oh, looks like I got some blizz powder already. Let's take a look here. Now, in order to make this work a little bit better, we should have a glacial precipitator. I've been running out and actually picking up snow because there's a biome not too far away, so I've just been picking these up. Quick shovel, snowball, no problem. Um, you can see right now this machine's already got. Uh, 3,400 millibuckets in there, two snowballs, 
and this stuff is dumping out. Is it going here? Let's see. There it goes. But yeah, that's what this ends up with. So Blizz Powder, then we dump this stuff in the Magma Crucible. Oops. After we turn it into... Cryothean Dust. So, these really aren't that complicated to make. Um, let's just do one of these for a pair. I'll throw the rest of those in. Um, but this stuff, there is some crafting stuff that this is used for. And we can go ahead and throw this in there. And it should output to the left. Since this is occupied. But yeah. Easiest way to make Blizz powder if you can't find Blizz. I haven't been able to find them. I don't know if they're deactivated or not. I'm not sure. But in my experience... This is the best option for this. So that is it for this episode. Until next time.